In this video, what we're going to be doing is setting up the uh, animation montages to play for a third person character. So previously we set up the animation blueprint along with the montages so they should be playing, but we have no way to fire them. So if we look at our blueprint for the 1911, we'll see we have our FPS arms fire montage, which duh has a reference to the montage, but we have nothing for our third person. So what we're going to do is create that. So if we go to our weapon base.h, we have our FPS arms fire montage. I'm going to open it or copy it and paste it again and call it third person. And I'm going to actually change the name to just third person montage. And same thing with the FPS arms. I'm going to change it to FPS montage. So now we're going to have to change the uh, return function for this. So if we go to our weapon base.cpp, Ignore this for now. Scroll to the bottom, get fire animation montage. We're going to paste it in. Now I want to change this from get fire anim montage to get FPS anim montage. So now we got to change that in the header too, like so. And then in the Nazi zombie character, we ended up using that function. So let's go down to our on fire right here. Change it from get fire anim montage to get FPS anim montage and we are good to go. So now in our weapon base.cpp, if we go to our multi-reload implementation, we currently have no uh, nothing to reload with for our third person characters yet. We have no animations for them. But regardless, we're still gonna op double click on this third person montage and replace FPS arms fire montage with that third person, like so. So it'll just simply fail when it goes to play this because we have no third person montage. But once we set that up, it will work. So now let's go to our weapon semi.cpp. And we have our function called multi fire implementation. Well, we're going to replace all of these montages with the third person montage as well. And then we need to add access to the actual third person mesh for this. So what we're going to do is we're, we have our get mesh 1p. We're just going to remove the 1p and change it to get mesh. And what this is going to do is if I open up the character, we have two meshes. Here's the mesh, which is just what comes default with a character class. And here's our mesh 1p for our first person. So get mesh will return that third person mesh. Now we need to do the same thing in weapon base.cpp. Change it from get mesh 1p to just simply get mesh. And then once all that is done, all we have to do is simply compile. And there was one more thing that I believe. Yes. So in our character base.cpp, previously this was set up if true and is locally controlled just for testing. So that way it would attach by default to the, uh, what's it called? by default to the first person hands, what we need to do is remove this true right here. So I've already done that. So I'm just going to let mine finish compiling and relaunch the Unreal Engine project. OK, I have an issue. Get fire in a montage is not a part of a weapon base. So Nazi zombie character line 126. So line 126. Change it from get fire and a montage to get FPS and a montage. Wait for it to compile. One day. There we go. And relaunch the engine. Well, the project. That mine's probably going to take a little bit because I'm having some issues regarding the map. So let it be locked up for like five, ten seconds. Hopefully that's as long as it actually ends up taking. Do, 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 do. Then once that's done, we're going to go to, yep, there we go. We're going to go to our weapons, 1911. Open up our 1911 montage or our blueprint, and we have our 
to montages. So we need to reset the FPS arms montage. So search for 1911, select AM underscore arms 1911 for the third person, search 1911 and do the third person montage. Compile save. Go back to the M1 carbine. Open that up. Do the exact same thing. Except search for M1. Select the arms for the arms. And the TP for the third person. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the S... Actually, I have not made the STG blueprint. Never mind. Oh. For some reason in the thumbnail, the textures weren't showing up in it. So now we're just going to hit save. And see what happens. Okay. We have an error, so anim BP FPS arms. Let's open that up. So where did it fail? The event graph. It's not there. It's in this enum. Ah, I know exactly what it is. I created a uh, pose for the STG a while back. So all I have to do now is simply remove it, compile and save and we're good to go. So I'm going to re-add that at the end of this video, and the, then we'll just be set, and we'll set up the uh, STG, but it'll only be working in semi-auto because we have not created our full auto class. But anyways, let's go back to here, and we're going to give it a try. So let's look. Here we have our aiming. We shoot. You can see. It is playing the recoil animation, but it's very subtle. So we're going to need to make some changes to the montage. So if we come over to our character, third person, animations, we're going to start with the M1 carbine. So we have our blend time. So we have our blend in and our blend out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a lower value. So like point, oh, let's see, point 0.1. Let's just try point 0.1 and point 0.1 and see what it looks like. And I think that looks a good bit better. So I'm going to leave it there. And that'll be working. That'll be enough for me. I think that's pretty good. Uh, let's do the same for the 1911, which I'm sure is going to end up having the same issue. But let's look first. So let's go to our Nazi zombie character, change the starting weapon to 1911, compile and save. Let's look and see what it looks like. So, yeah, it's very subtle. So let's open the montage for the 1911. And we're going to do the, we're going to change the blend. I'm in the first person. Whoops. Change the blend time, so the blend in, let's do the same thing, 0.1, and blend out, 0.1. And let's see what it looks like. That is much better in my opinion. And I'm happy with that. So, we now have our animation set up for the... Uh, third person character with the 1911 and the M1 carbine. Up next, let's see how long, eight minutes, we're going to set up our, our STG real quick. So we're going to go to our weaponbase.h, go to our e weapon ID enum, we're going to add another one. So I'm just going to copy this, do comma, and on a new line, paste it in. Give this one a name of STG44, like so and simply compile. This will allow us to make a new section in our switch statement for the Sturmgewehr. So let's see, how long is this going to take? There we go. A good old freeze. Uh, 
And there we go. So, set up the STG. So we're going to come down here to our C++ classes. The game, public, Nazi zombie, usables, weapons, and we're going to go off the weapon semi. So we're just going to right click, create a blueprint class derived from it. Go down here to weapons, and click on STG44. And let's give this a name of BP underscore STG44. Now let's give set the mesh to the STG44. Set the fire animation to STG44 fire. First person animation montage to the STG44 montage. Which I'm pretty sure was created already, but I'm not entirely sure entirely sure and set the weapon ID to STG44. Now I'm gonna set the just the ammo so magazine to 130 and the total to 150. I don't know the actual values in War to War for the, the uh, total ammo and same thing for the damage but I'm gonna go ahead and compile and save and change the weapon name to STG44. So now let's go ahead and set this up and our first person arms. So FPS, uh, arms, animation blueprint. Go to our animation graph. We're going to right click on our E weapon ID, add an element for the STG44, copy and paste the M1 carbine down, and give it a name of STG44. Let's open that up. Open up the initial state. We're going to select the STG44 hip idle. Go to the aimed idle to run. I really need to change the names. We're going to select the ADS idle. Compile and save. And plug that into the STG44 pose. And now we can give it a try. So go to blueprint classes, player, or not to zombie character, select BP STG44, and see what happens. I'm just going to play in first person, while the one. And as you can see, we now have our STG44 playing like so. And it just occurred to me that we may not have actually created the animation montage for this gun in the previous video or two. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick walkthrough on what to do there. So FPS, animations, STG44. Uh, you're going to right click, animation create a new animation montage, and select the FPS arms skeleton, and name it AM underscore arms underscore STG44, and open it up. Then you're just going to simply drag and drop, so I'll delete any animations in here, and just drag and drop the ADS fire and the hip fire animations, just like we did with all the other guns, and delete the reload section. And I set the blend time for zero, and the blend time for the blend out to 0 0.1. In my opinion, that just, it's whatever works best for you. And that's all. So, now, let's see, I'm trying to think of anything else. We do need to remove the empty casings right there, as well as there is a magazine. Oh, that is a creepy spot. Magazine behind us that we can also get rid of that's floating. And... We're not going to do that in this video, but kind of a way you can go ahead and start doing that is if we go to our weapon blueprint, go to the uh, graph, drag out the weapon mesh, do hide bone by name, and just simply change the bone name to the bones of the gun that you want to hide, such as empty case 1, 2, 3, 4, and magazine 2. And then whenever we're... Uh, you know, going to be doing certain reloads and that kind of stuff, or maybe we want to have an animation for a shell ejecting, we would unhide, you know, maybe one of the cases. Or we're probably going to end up just simply spawning the cases for the firing whenever we actually have it, so that it, uh, you know, it shoots. Well, it ejects the case. Now, one more thing that I do want to do real quick is I want to do a quick little test. You do not have to follow along with this, but I'm just kind of curious. So what I want to do, I'm going to take this default slot, move it to the other side, because I'm not entirely sure on this, and plug it in. 
STG44 to the pose, compile and save, and let me see if this still works. Okay, so that works. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete the slots right here and reconnect them all up. Compile, save, and do the same thing for the third person blueprint or animation blueprint. So connect them both up and I'm going to move this over, paste the slot and just put the slot in the middle there. Compile and save. Okay. Now I'm going to confirm that it is working for both. So I'm just going to select the, I guess, M1 carbine and look at it. Ah, crap. I hit launch outside of the editor again. Let me shut it down. But it, it should be good to go. I know I've been bouncing around a lot in like the past two or three videos, and that's just because I'm trying to hurry up and get everything imported, all the assets imported, and set up as quickly as possible so that way we can continue making progress. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to assume it's saved. Okay, it did. All right, let's confirm that it's playing the animation montage, which it does, and we have cleaned up the, uh, oh, what do you call it? The anim graph a little bit. Now, actually, I stand corrected. There's one more thing that I just realized that I wanted to do that I forgot, didn't catch. I want to set it back to the STG44. And when I hit play, you'll see the line trace is coming out of the root. So we need to create the socket on the muzzle. So if we come down here to our weapons, I'm going to open up the 1911 skeleton, as well as the Sturmgewehr skeleton. And I'm going to click on the muzzle of the STG. And we can see here the socket is called muzzle socket. So I'm going to go to the muzzle, right click, add socket, and change it to muzzle socket, and save. So now, as you can see, it's shooting out of the muzzle, but we need to rotate it by 90 degrees. So grab this, rotate it by 90, and save. now whatever we're aiming at so if I aim at I don't even know if they'll go that far all right that's cool actually I've noticed it's crashed before when I shot something in that area so I'm wondering if it's just hitting something or if it doesn't hit anything and then it causes a crash that might be what the issue is so I'm gonna look into that but now where we're aiming such as the light You know, we shoot, we hit the light. So now, as far as I can think of, we are all caught up and set up and good to go. So, again, if you have any issues, the link to the Discord is in the description. Feel free to join it and ask for help, and I'll help you set it up, because I'm, I may have skipped over something in the past two or three videos. I'm not entirely sure. If I did, please mention it, and I will either... I will probably end up adding a quick little update on how to fix that just a quick little video on it but that's if you point it out to me so now that we are pretty much all caught up we can continue making you know i guess more progress so i will see you in the next one